Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. I hope all is well. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. I really do appreciate it. If you're absolutely addicted to the game of basketball like I am, make sure you click that red subscribe button down below and light up that post notification bell so you do not miss a future video when it comes to the basketball world. And I'm very excited to talk about this team slash player here. It's De'Aaron Fox and the Sacramento Kings. De'Aaron Fox is obviously the face of the franchise right now, especially the way he's playing, the level he's playing at, and the Sacramento Kings are coming out victorious. And I know we're only, what, 14 games into the season or 15 games through the season for some NBA teams out there. But as of right now, if, if we started up the NBA plan slash playoffs, the Sacramento Kings would be in the plan as they're two games over 500 right now as the seventh seed, and they're on a five-game winning streak. They've been tearing it up on the offense side of the basketball. They've been clutch in big-time moments, and you definitely have to give credit to their leader of De'Aaron Fox and Mike Brown. Mike Brown has gotten the most out of this offense, in my opinion. They have over three players on this roster right now that is shooting above average from beyond the arc, and... You could say there's an improvement, especially when it comes to one player and then another player. Yes, you're shooting around 35% territory of Trey Lyles, but he's someone that has taken threes prior to this season. But now it's like consistently Mike Brown is telling him to shoot him. He relies on like he can really trust his mechanics or he trusts his mechanics to shoot it from beyond the arc. And I really like this aggressive approach by Trey Lyles. And I feel like the offense looks a lot better the way it's ran. And you just see these skip passes by De'Aaron Fox, finding guys cutting to the basket. There's more movement within the flow of this offense compared to a Luke Walton that had structure, but I don't think he had the right structure to really play the guys throughout their strengths. So De'Aaron Fox is playing at an MVP type of level right now. He's playing at a very high level for the Sacramento Kings, and he's definitely made that improvement improvement so far throughout his career but the big thing with him is can he keep it up it's a small sample size but he's playing at a very high level you know he's taken with the fifth overall pick pick back in the 2017 NBA draft he had these comparisons to John Wall you know he's lightning fast he's athletic but can his jump shot develop and how is he going to be constantly on the defense side of the basketball is he going to constantly be engaged his rookie year he didn't put up any crazy points he averaged 11 points he turned over the ball he had some very nice moments but then he had bad moments he looked like a rookie to be completely honest with you guys he did not play a consistent well brand of basketball and it's a rookie you get a pass it's like the year that you're really learning second year really impressed me he started to become better when it came to consistently scoring the ball the efficiency went up shot it very well from beyond the arc shot it over 37 percent clip like you got to give credit to De'Aaron Fox the way he progressed when it came to his discipline out there on the floor and then it was like oh my gosh De'Aaron Fox year three is going to be absolutely deadly so he still put up his points but you could say he wasn't as engaged or at least as disciplined on defense. I feel like he's always tried, but it came down to doing the little things of really having better footwork outside on the perimeter. But I feel like when it just came down to his overall fundamentals, sometimes I felt he was a little sloppy when it came to his technique, which did affect him. And then you saw the three-point percentage dip, like, like dip from year two to year three. And we saw it he, him not really consistently shoot a well year one. So it's taken a few years throughout his NBA career. I believe he's he's in year five now because he was drafted in 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, or it's actually year six for Darren Fox. Like, it's crazy that the 2000, it feels like the 2017 NBA draft is literally yesterday. And you just see an amazing De'Aaron Fox this season. And maybe it's that coach, but obviously you have to give credit to De'Aaron Fox and his work ethic. Because I feel like the pace he's playing at and the progression, we know he's someone that really thrives when it comes to getting out and running. You know, he's a beast in transition. He's a blur. He's one of the fastest players in the league. He could pick your pocket. But when it comes to the attention to detail, his technique, his fundamentals, the way he's reading the floor with these skip passes, finding guys cutting, seems like he's making the right play in transition, and he's not always looking to score. But his half-court setting game has impressed me the most when it's come to his overall game this season because he's been a very clutch player for the Sacramento Kings. When it looks like the Kings are folding defensively or they have a lapse offensively and they're kind of looking stagnant, Darren Fox steps up in a big-time moment. He's improved big-time from beyond the arc as he's shooting 37% from three, but it's not just the three point like three point shot from the outside. It's not just his lightning fast athleticism, utilizing screens, working downhill, utilizing his strength as well. It's his mid range game. I feel like his mid range game is just absolutely automatic. His ability to stop on a dime, pull up from mid range, and hit him in big time spots, especially when it matters most as well. 
He's taken those in the past, but he hasn't consistently made them. And if he can keep that up throughout the season, it's going to be absolutely deadly. And it's going to be amazing for the Sacramento Kings team. But he's playing at an ultra high level. He's doing a good job getting into the teeth of the defense. And if nothing's there, he's kicking it out. But he's also making some ridiculous finishes. He's drawing fouls. He's just playing at a very high level. And there was just so much criticism, obviously, as well when Tyrus Halliburton went on to be traded. So he was like, you know what? I'm going to prove myself here. Like, I'm going to prove that I'm the franchise guard and that you could win with me. I'm not just this volume guy that could put up points. I can impact winning. And he's doing that so far this season with the Kings being two games over 500. And when you take a look at De'Aaron Fox's stats so far this season, when it comes to the 2022-23 to NBA season, he's averaging 24.8 points per game. He's averaging 6.4 assists per game. And that's like third highest so far in his career or might be fourth highest because he averaged seven assists. Two times than he averaged 6.8 assists. He's averaging a steal, 0.5 blocks, 2.8 turnovers. He's shooting 82% from the free throw line, which is a career high. Getting there 4.8 times per game. You take a look at his overall two-point percentage, shooting 62% there. He's shooting 37.5% from three. On a good amount of attempts, five threes per game that he's taking. He's shooting 55% from the field on 17 shot attempts. So not like he's taking 20 shots per game. And then you also take a look at he's averaging 32 minutes per game and he's played 13 games so far this season. And I'm someone that really thinks about the mental approach to the game and not just the overall skill set. I do think there's a huge confidence factor when it comes to the way Mike Brown is utilizing his players, like having Trey Lyle shoot these three point shots really trusting his skill set and then you think about it as well Malik Monk was De'Aaron Fox's college teammate and maybe having a friend there and someone that you've had chemistry with back in college is just a homegrown feeling type of vibe you know when it comes to this basketball club and just seeing everyone shoot the three ball very well opens up a lot of things for a De'Aaron Fox Keegan, Keegan Murray shooting 37% from three Trey Lyles is shooting 35% from three I know that's not crazy high but it's still at a a high level for him someone that wasn't really known as a true shooter when it came to entering this league or at least consistently taking them this season Kevin Herter shooting 50% from three I'm not even joking you look at Kevin Herter shooting splits it's ridiculous he's shooting 49% from feet from the field but he's shooting 51% from three just yeah Keegan Murray shooting it well Malik Monk is shooting it well from the outside so you have guys that can really space the floor and knock down shots when it comes to the overall field Terrence Davis is shooting 40.8 percent from three like coming off of the bench he just absolutely erupted in that Brooklyn Nets game and he was pretty much the reason the Sacramento Kings or one of the main reasons they were able to come out victorious versus the Brooklyn Nets his ability to just score the ball and bring them a spark when it came to his defense his athleticism and his shooting from the outside and I know Kings fans they probably, they want to see the playoffs, but they want to at least see the play-in. They want to see that they're taking, like, they're moving in the right direction. I feel like I feel like that's something they just want to, really want to see. Luke Wallen, he had a plan, but I feel like his plan didn't really execute within his, within his players' skill sets. And just finally seeing a coach, maybe, that is utilizing players the right way and getting the most out of their players is something Kings fans have to be really excited about, that they're possibly possibly moving in the right direction and you know the De'Aaron Fox John Wall comparisons are coming back of how John Wall was with the Wizards when he was fully healthy getting buckets distributing the basketball and I know some Kings fans are, are going to be like oh my gosh he might be better than John Wall he's shooting the three ball better from the outside but John Wall with the Wizards was just absolutely amazing you take a look at Darren Fox on the defense side of the basketball I think he's doing a really good job sacrificing his body in big time moments and I feel like his footwork and his ability to just extend his arms out there's just more of a technique and more of an effort there on defense that I'm really appre appreciating about Darren Fox's game this season I'm I'm not gonna say he didn't always give it his all, but it might just come down to coaching. Some people just think, like, you have talent, you're going to win games. Like, Jalen Green, Alperen Sengun, like, you have these solid talent, Kevin Porter Jr. Some people love those players that the Houston Rockets have. They had the third, they had the third overall pick, and some people think you just have young talent, you're going to win games, but... You look at those offensive sets, I feel like they're extremely sloppy. I know the Spurs are like three games under 500, but some people expect them to be even worse, have like two games. But you see how important the coaching is of a Greg Popovich. You look at the Utah Jazz, people thought they were going to be terrible, including me. But you take a look at what Hardy's done with his players, playing them throughout their strengths, and really getting to 
getting them to all believe in each other. And I feel like Mike Brown is really pushing these Kings players to play hard for each other. So bonus, his feel for the game, I feel like it's a perfect player next to to have with an De'Aaron Fox. So bonus doesn't really consistently need the ball in his hands to be effective. We know he's a very good distributor of the ball. He's averaging a good amount of assists, like above average for his position. He's someone that has really good footwork. He's not crazy athletic, but he makes the right basketball play as well. This Kings team just plays with a high motor. They play with a big-time demeanor, and I'm excited to see what this Kings team is going to do moving forward and how De'Aaron Fox is going to look as this number one option moving forward. And if they face adversity, are they going to overcome it compared to past seasons? But defensively, I think they definitely still need to improve in that department. But let me know down below your thoughts on this Kings team. Peace out, y'all.